Welcome to episode two of Principal Science, and I'm your host, Principal Science. Today, we're going to finish up our story, Etta Twist, Scientist. We're going to continue to look a little bit more at inclined planes. I'm going to introduce you to my favorite scientist. He's a marine biologist. We're going to see another rocket launch. This is going to be a great episode of Principal Science. Enjoy. The word of the day is chlorophyll. These pigments help make the world green. Chlorophyll is a word used to describe several kinds of green pigments in plants. They are often contained in structures called chloroplasts. These green pigments use sunlight to make energy out of carbon dioxide and water. In the process, they produce oxygen, something we all need to breathe. The scientific word of the day is chlorophyll. Ada Twist, scientist, continued. Ada did research to learn all she could of smellings and smells, both stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true, the terrible stink from dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis too. Then Zowie, the stink struck again. Just like that, hypothesis too. It caused, it's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now, by the time we count to three. Enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said no. What, Ada queried. Her father said go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with her questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. She sat all alone by herself in the hall, and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so Ada sat, she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science and Stu and the cat, and how her experience made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible thinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do, she asked a small question, and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three, more, three questions more, and some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why, and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Her parents calmed down, and they came to back talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as, she, as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did, because that's what you do. When your kid has a passion and a heart that is true, they remade their world. Now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asked lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two. Will they discover the stink that curls the toes? Well, that's a question, and someday, who knows? Ada Twist Scientist, and just like all our scorpions, ask great questions. On this day in the year 2000, NASA launched the 2001 Mars Odyssey spacecraft on a Delta II rocket. We 
have ignition and liftoff of a Delta II rocket carrying NASA on an odyssey back to Mars. On this day, in the year 2000, that was super cool. Did you know you can watch the International Space Station pass overhead from several thousand worldwide locations? It's the third brightest object in the sky and easy to spot if you know where to look. It's visible to the naked eye. It looks like a fast moving plane, only much higher and traveling thousands of miles an hour faster. All you have to do is go to spotthestation.nasa.gov and you can find where you can look and the times so that you can see the International Space Station flying overhead. This doesn't happen all the time. Scientist of the day is Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau was born on June 11, 1910 in France. His pioneering television series, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, promoted human understanding of ocean life, with Cousteau and his crew doing things never seen before, such as swimming with whales, caressing octopuses, and being pulled along by giant sea turtles. He was the first person to propose that whales and porpoises use echolocation to navigate. Jacques Cousteau is our scientist of the day, and he was a marine biologist. Yesterday we talked about inclined planes, and we're going to continue that discussion today, and I have more great examples of inclined planes. Now remember, an inclined plane is a simple machine consisting of a sloping surface used to raise or lower heavy objects. Now, when you're going up an inclined plane, the steeper the plane, the harder it is to push. The lower the plane, the easier it is to push. Um, friction causes a lot of that. Now, if you have wheels, that helps Im immensely. Now, when you're going down an inclined plane, it's a lot easier because our friend gravity. And if you have wheels or you can roll, be careful. You can get out of control on a downhill inclined plane. You know, who invented inclined planes? Well, inclined planes are found in nature, a rolling hill. People probably figured out quite quickly that it's easier to walk or move things up and down using a slope or an inclined plane. Archimedes first discussed the principles behind inclined planes around 200 BC. Egyptians used ramps to heave heavy rocks to make their pyramids. Without an inclined plane, we would not have the Egyptian pyramids. That's a little bit more about inclined planes. Now watch these examples of more inclined planes and try not to laugh too hard. Episode 2 of Principal Science. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and we're going to learn more about some simple machines. Ta-ta for now.